Hi, I'm Olivia, a 28-year-old graphic designer. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe for more tales from my life. Now, let me take you back to a night that changed everything for me. The soft glow of the moon filtered through the sheer curtains of my hotel room, casting a serene light over the array of wedding decorations scattered around. It was the eve of my wedding, and the air was thick with the scent of fresh roses and anticipation. The rehearsal dinner had been nothing short of magical, setting the perfect stage for what was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. As I stood there, admiring the beautiful gown hanging by the window, my dream dress, I couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement. Five years of love, laughter, and shared dreams with Jake, my soon-to-be husband, were about to culminate in our perfect beginning. Or so I thought. Megan, my best friend and maid of honor, had been my rock through all the planning. Every detail, from the choice of flowers to the playlist, bore her touch. You're going to be the most beautiful bride, she had said earlier that evening, her smile warm and reassuring. Little did I know, the foundations of my world were about to crumble. It was close to midnight when a soft knock disturbed my reverie. Expecting room service, I opened the door to find Jake instead. His face was pale, his eyes avoiding mine, a stark contrast to the man who had lovingly held my hand just hours before. Olivia, we need to talk, he muttered, his voice barely above a whisper. Confused, I stepped aside, letting him in. What's wrong? Is everything okay with the arrangements? Jake paced briefly before stopping in front of me, taking a deep breath. It's not about the wedding. It's about us. Or rather, about me and... Megan. My heart skipped a beat. Megan? What about her? I've fallen in love with her, Olivia. I didn't plan for this to happen, but it did. And I can't marry you knowing I have these feelings for someone else. The room spun around me as his words sank in. The betrayal felt like a physical blow, knocking the air from my lungs. You're in love with Megan? My best friend? He nodded, misery etched on his face. I'm so sorry, Olivia. I didn't mean to hurt you. The pain turned quickly to anger as reality set in. I grabbed my phone and dialed Megan. She picked up after the second ring, her voice sleepy. Olivia? Is everything okay? How could you? I spat out, tears streaming down my face. How long, Megan? How long have you been doing this to me? There was a pause, a silence that spoke volumes before she finally whispered. I'm sorry, Olivia. It just happened. Just happened? My voice broke as I confronted the two people I had trusted the most. You both planned my wedding with me while stabbing me in the back? Jake tried to reach out, his hand trembling. Please, Olivia, I truly am sorry. Pushing him away, I slumped against the wall, overwhelmed by a torrent of emotions. The night dragged on with more tears and accusations, until exhaustion took over. As dawn broke, the reality of my situation became clear. There was no wedding to look forward to, just the humiliating task of calling it off. The room, once a symbol of my dreams, now felt like a prison of my nightmares. Alone, betrayed, and heartbroken, I watched the sunrise, the beginning of a day that was supposed to be mine. Instead, it marked the start of a new chapter, one where I would have to pick up the pieces of my shattered life. The morning light crept through the curtains, a stark reminder of the day that was never meant to be. There I was, sitting on the edge of the bed that was supposed to be my first as a married woman, surrounded by unopened champagne and untouched bouquets. The daunting task ahead was enough to make my stomach churn. One by one, I picked up my phone to cancel the wedding and explain to our guests the event was off. The calls were brutal, each one a fresh wound on my already battered heart. My mother was the first to arrive after she heard the news. Her embrace was both a haven and a painful reminder of the dreams we'd shared for this day. We'll get through this, Olivia, she reassured me, her voice steady, but her eyes brimming with unshed tears. Next came Rachel and Claire, my college friends who had flown in just for the weekend. They took charge of the logistical nightmares, contacting the vendors, handling the cancellation fees, and managing the flurry of questions from confused guests. Their efficiency was a lifeline thrown in the chaotic sea that my life had become. As the hours passed, the reality of Megan's betrayal sank deeper. Flashbacks of our friendship kept playing in my mind. How we met in design school, shared late-night project sessions, and dreamed of our futures. Megan had been there when Jake proposed, 
her face shining with what I thought was happiness for me. The depth of her deception cut deeper than Jake's, tearing at the fabric of what I thought defined friendship. In the solitude of the afternoon, after the calls had been made and the guests had been informed, the weight of isolation pressed down on me. The room felt colder, emptier. I couldn't help but replay the moments I might have missed, the signs of their growing closeness that I had naively overlooked. Determined not to drown in my sorrow, I pulled out my laptop and started drafting a new plan for my life. Design had always been my sanctuary, and now, more than ever, I needed to throw myself into my work. I sketched out ideas for a new project, one that wasn't tied to the memories of my planned wedding. A series of minimalist posters themed around empowerment and moving forward. It felt symbolic, like I was designing my way out of despair. The decision to rebuild wasn't just about my career. It was about reclaiming my life. I knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but as I filled my screen with designs, each line felt like a small victory, a reclaiming of the control I'd lost that night. By evening, the room that had once held my bridal dreams was now a war room for my new beginnings. The scattered decorations were put away, the reminders of a love lost packed up. In their place were my sketches and designs, proof that even in the depths of betrayal, I could find a way to rise. As the sun set on what was supposed to be my wedding day, I felt a quiet determination settling in my bones. I wasn't just going to get past this. I was going to emerge stronger, on my own terms. I wasn't the same Olivia who had opened the door to Jake last night. I was someone new, someone fierce, someone ready to face whatever came next. Months had passed since the day that turned my world upside down. With each passing day, I poured my heart into my work, letting the clean lines and vibrant colors of my designs rebuild the broken pieces of my heart. It was during these months of solitude and creation that I started stepping back into the social scene, attending gallery openings, design panels, and industry meetups. My presence at these events was not just about networking. It was about reclaiming my place in the world, a world I once shared with Jake and Megan. My confidence gradually returned as my portfolio expanded and the design community began to take notice. I was even featured in a local design magazine, a testament to my rising influence and renewed spirit. This newfound recognition felt like a beacon of light, guiding me away from the shadows of my past. However, the past wasn't ready to let me go just yet. During a casual catch-up over coffee, a friend who was unaware of the full extent of my breakup offhandedly mentioned how Jake and Megan had seemed close, even at last year's design awards. The comment was like a jolt, reopening questions I thought I had buried. Driven by a need for the full truth, I reached out discreetly to a few other friends and acquaintances who had interacted with Jake and Megan. Piece by piece, the timeline they painted confirmed my worst fears. Their affair had likely started long before Jake's confession, possibly even as we were planning our wedding. Armed with this knowledge, anger and betrayal churned within me, but this time, it was tempered by a cold determination. I needed closure, and I needed to clear my name from the whispers of sympathy that followed me like a shadow. I hatched a plan, one that would expose their deceit to the very community they thrived in, I used my newfound status to secure an invitation to speak at the upcoming annual design conference, a high-profile event attended by the who's who of the design world. Under the guise of extending an olive branch, I invited Jake and Megan to the event, hinting at a possible reconciliation, or at least a public smoothing over of past tensions. They, blinded by their own deceit, readily agreed, likely thinking it would help mend their public image. The night of the event arrived, and the conference hall buzzed with anticipation. Designers, artists, and creators mingled, their conversations a vibrant tapestry of ideas and gossip. As I prepared for my speech, I could see Jake and Megan circulating among the guests, their laughter a stark contrast to the storm brewing just beneath the surface. When my turn came, I stepped onto the stage, my heart pounding but my voice steady. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I want to talk about authenticity and design, and in life, I began, my gaze sweeping over the crowd, finally resting on Jake and Megan. True design, like true love, is built on honesty and trust. Without these, no foundation is secure. I paused, letting my words sink in. Unfortunately, not all projects or relationships are what they seem. Sometimes, what is presented as a partnership is actually a deception. 
The room grew tense, the air thick with sudden unease. Take, for example, a project that started about a year ago, I continued, my voice clear and unwavering. A project that involved not just professional collaboration, but personal betrayal. The gasps were audible, the connections being made. I didn't need to name names. The eyes turning towards Jake and Megan did the work for me. As whispers began to ripple through the room, I concluded, Tonight, I stand before you not just as a designer, but as someone who has learned this lesson through deep personal betrayal. I paused, allowing my words to resonate. Then, methodically, I began to unveil the evidence of Jake and Megan's affair. I projected screenshots of their texts onto the large screen behind me, messages that dated back to the early days of our wedding planning. The shock in the room was palpable, a collective gasp echoing off the walls. These aren't just speculations. These are confessions from those who once called themselves friends, I declared, my voice unwavering. The confrontation was intense. Jake and Megan, now the center of everyone's scrutiny, tried to leave but the crowd's murmurs and disapproving stares held them in place. I remained composed, my every word and gesture calculated to reveal the truth, without stooping to their level of deceit. As the presentation concluded, the applause was thunderous, not just for the courage to expose the truth, but for the professionalism with which I handled the most personal pain. Later, as I reflected on the events of the night, I realized that this confrontation wasn't just about public vindication— it was a crucial step in my healing process. I had faced my betrayers, not with bitterness, but with the dignity and strength that had grown from my pain. Months later, my career had taken strides that once seemed unimaginable. My designs were more daring, more vibrant, and infused with the lessons of my journey. Beyond professional success, my personal life flourished, too. I found love again, this time with someone who valued and cherished the honesty and strength I had come to embody. Sitting in my new studio, surrounded by my creations, I realized how far I had come. The betrayal that once threatened to break me had instead built me stronger, wiser, and more compassionate. I had not only moved on from the past, but had transformed it into a foundation for a future filled with hope and authenticity. In the end, the greatest design I had ever created was not one of textiles or sketches. It was the redesign of my own life crafted with resilience and adorned with the true colors of trust and love. And that brings us to the end of this story. How would you have handled discovering such a deep betrayal? Would you have taken the same steps as Olivia, or chosen a different path to confront or move past the deceit? I'm eager to hear your thoughts and experiences, so please share them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and the way it unfolded, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more intriguing tales and discussions. Your support helps us keep bringing these stories to life.